Hey, I'm making this video to help you understand the connection between the arch of your foot and the arch of your inner hip and the arch of your low back. And I'm going to use an interdisciplinary approach because I feel very strongly that the purpose of all of the tools from different physical modalities is to help you better understand yourself and then as a byproduct to help you feel better and more empowered. So uh, let's just get right into it. I know there's a lot of online yoga these days and um, these are some techniques that you can bring into really any yoga practice that you utilize. Uh, I think that understanding the body really transcends the dogmas of any one practice of exactly how you place yourself in a posture because there are basic realities about how bodies function um, that transcend one style of yoga or practice or movement. So let's just get right into it. Obviously you have an arch in your foot and some people may have more or less arch and uh, more or less arch might make you gen genetically predisposed to having an easier or harder time balancing. Um, also, I just wanted to announce my quarantine sort of do double man bun thing here and kind of apologize for it. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with this once we get out of quarantine. But um, making an arch in your foot is something that's going to inform a lift throughout your body, engage the muscles of your lower leg to support your knee, and also give you space in your inner hip and lower back so that when you do postures like warrior postures, you get, I guess, what's typically referred to as hip opening. But when I think of hip opening, I don't really think of like a static or passive stretch. I think of um, utilizing force in opposite directions in order to make space at a junction or joint. Uh, so really, when well practiced, asanas can be like loaded progressive stretching. In other words, um, weight bearing range of motion acquisition. and. Uh, the asana can also give you the opportunity to put yourself in the center between strength and flexibility. So if you look at my foot here, you can see that if I allow my ankle to collapse inwards, I have a naturally um, lifted arch, but my arch uh, collapses and you can imagine what the kind of pressure that would put on my knee. It'll also make my butt stick out to put more pressure in my lower back in a warrior posture. So there are a few simple solutions to that that you'll feel translate up your body. The most basic one is just to lift up your toes. And this is a really great way to start to understand how a foot operates and affects uh, the rest of the body in a static posture. And you can see as soon as my foot lifted, my um, calf muscles engaged, my arch lifted, um, and I, I feel some action in my hip. So this is a really good place to start if you just haven't been paying attention to your feet at all in your yoga postures. Um, and after doing that for a while, what I recommend actually is you start by lifting your toes and then actually put your toes down and grip the floor with your toes, which will give you more action in the back of your leg and also will give you the ability to kind of glide your ankle away from the center line. So when I do this, I push down with my toes and I feel for dragging my heel to the outside and it doesn't actually move, but I feel the whole backside of my leg light up when I do that. So this is a really good exercise just to practice um, in this like half squat position or if this hurts your knee, I mean, you could do this just as well in uh, a position like this. And you can see from the side, the muscle of my calf, muscles of my calves are, are relaxed. And when I lift my toes, they engage. And when I put my toes down, they actually, I'm able to pull my heel outwards and pressure through the ball of my foot. And I feel that there's a very strong connection between awareness of the balls of your feet and the movement of your sitting bones, either apart in a posture like a downward dog or together in a posture like a warrior too. So once you get in touch with that foot thing, I want you to try this um, regression for a martial arts uh, horse stance. So the martial arts horse stance is very interesting because I, it, it's more demanding than the yoga one where you turn your feet out. In the martial arts variation, you step your feet out but keep them pointing forward which demands more um, rotation in your hip and in your hips and also more strength from your legs so in the regression what you do is you put your heels and your back against the wall and so this will have the side benefit of teaching you how to brace your abdominals in a way that stabilizes your lower back so that your warrior two posture can become a de decompressive movement for your lower back instead of using your back to hold you up in the pose so all you do is um, put your back against the wall step your feet apart um, as far as you can bend your knees and use your abdominals to push your low back into the wall i think one of the common mistakes in yoga is always sending breath up into the chest and heart because breathe into your heart or we talk so much about heart in yoga but um 
there's a real benefit to creating intra-abdominal pressure by using a more diaphragmatic breath. So what I do in this position is I actually inhale down into my belly and I let my belly go outwards and at the same time I press my low back backwards. And then when I exhale, I push my belly in and try to press my low back into the wall. The whole time I'm gripping the floor with my toes and pressing my knees outwards. And what that's doing is making the muscles on the outsides of my hips work, just like they're gonna have to work in a warrior two posture. You can keep trying to go lower and slide your feet outwards. You're gonna find that this is quite demanding in the hips. And now you um, utilize your own outer hip strength to open your knees outwards. So you see there's like, there's no external force other than gravity. A final piece here is take your chin and glide it backwards a little bit so that you are creating the feeling of lumbar flexion or, or lumbar slight rounding, but um, you're not creating that lumbar length by hunching in the upper body and just gliding your chin back will set your head over the rest of your spine and create a slight feeling of thoracic extension. So anytime I'm trying to decompress my spine and find center in a position like this, I'm basically thinking low back rounds. It's like a feeling because if I think round, it'll lengthen. And then I'm thinking ribs together, but finally it's like chin back so that I'm not closing off my heart. So if you've been doing this for this long, you will definitely be feeling your legs and hips. And then push your hips forward to come out. So instead of like coming out with your back by arching, push your hips forward to stand up. And then you start to get in touch with the idea of utilizing your um, legs as a true first floor to create strength, structure, and stability underneath you so that you have capacity, fluency in your second floor and vision in your third floor. And these are Katona yoga metaphors that I think are really appropriate. If you want to take this into a warrior two application, now that you know what it feels like to use the outside of your hip to open your knee to its own side. Again, I'm not pushing your knee back with, with my hand or you're not doing that. Come into a warrior two position and use the same wall. And now your goal here is it's okay if your back hip comes off the wall a little bit, but feel for using your feet so that you can move from the ground up and make a, a decompression in this hip so that the femur bone moves away from the acetabulum, but at the same time that the sitting bones move together. So what I mean in really simple terms is turn your feet on first by lifting your toes and feel how that immediately um, feet gives you the feeling that your feet pushing down are bringing your hips underneath you so you can lift your vision and then grip the floor with your toes. And as I grip the floor with my toes, I also push the floor away. When I push the floor away with my right foot, I feel for my right thigh bone sliding forward. When I grip the floor with my left big toe, I very slightly internally rotate my back leg, which doesn't mean that I move my hips forward or turn my hips to the right. And then if you wanna you know, fi finish it off, you can bring your arms out and then you can really feel how you can stretch outwards with your fingers, but also just a little bit of scapular retraction so that you can set your head over your spine and utilize your armpit muscles to support your back. And then you can see this knee wants to come in. So I'm gonna use the same muscles that I use in the horse stance. And from the ball of my foot, I press my knee outwards. And now what I feel in the pose is um, that my back is supported and I feel a lot more work on the, in, uh, on the inner groin of this back leg. Anytime you come up out of a pose, think that you're pushing from the circumference of the pose to come to the center of the pose. So let's say, okay, I went into my full expression of the warrior two, and then I push out to come out so that um, rather than breaking the pose or some of the terminology that I think is um, sort of common a lot of the time in um, exiting asanas, you um, exit the pose with strength and you maintain the structure and the stability, which is like, you could think of it as um, maintaining some dignity when you make a graceful exit. I hope that uh, this is useful and let me know in the comments if you feel like this kind of content is helpful to you guys and I'll do more of it and we'll get some more online stuff going soon. So uh, once again, apologies for the odd hairstyle and much love to everybody out there. I hope you guys are all staying safe and sane.